Hello everyone, this is Rokas, or, or also Rokas. Uh, so to begin with, uh, I'm sorry that it's been a while since I uploaded a video on this channel. Uh, my instructor, Cynthia Patrick Cassidy, came to Lithuania, then I went to visit my brother in the UK. Uh, there's a lot of other stuff going on. Uh, I was teaching, a, I was giving a lecture to a couple of hundred of kids in a school about um, violence in school because it's a very... It's a very harsh subject in Lithuania, in my country. Uh, I was giving a stress relief seminar. The whole dojo is obviously moving ahead. So there was a lot of stuff. And even though I wanted to, there was barely any time to make a video. But uh, finally I have some time. Uh, and this time what I wanted to talk to you about uh, is a bit more personal. Um, I've made a few videos uh, on, the, on the line of this topic, but never really finished it. You know, there's one called How Batman Changed My Life. It's an animation about which shares a bit of my story. Uh, there's a few How to Open Jojo videos, but never I really fully shared uh, my story. And uh, oftentimes in the YouTube comments, I get the comments. So what style do you practice? Uh, or, you know, how did you start Aikido? Where did you start? Etc. Etc. And I decided I'm going to just make this video so that whenever somebody asks a question, I could just, you know, show this video to look at. So without any further ado, I'll uh, simply share my story of Aikido. I was born in, in Shoulei, so Aikido Shoulei, Shoulei is the name of the city. So I was born in Shoulei, the city where I run my dojo right now. But uh, I grew up in another city called Panevejis. It's a small, uh, it's a fairly small city compared to other big countries, but it's the fifth biggest city in Lithuania. But at that time, after the post, uh, after post, in the post-Soviet time, after the Soviet Union collapsed, uh, there was a lot of crime back there, and uh, the city was even called Little Chicago by some, because back then Chicago was also known as a big crime city. So crime was very common there, and uh, since I was not in the thug in the thug life, since I was not. Uh, in any gang, uh, and I was pretty much the opposite. I was, uh, as being a, kind of a hip hopper, uh, the gangs would hunt us down and hunt me, hunt my friends down, and, and try to kick our ass or rob us, etc., etc. So I would have to face physical conflict on a very regular basis. It was very common to get attacked. Uh, I th so I feel that already inspired me to, to start to look into how to protect others. Obviously, I had to protect myself, but, but I was able to protect myself uh, pretty much always, but uh, my friends would still get, uh, get into a lot of trouble. So I decided to ask myself, okay, so how can I protect my friends? How, how can I, seeing all that, seeing all those, uh, all that suffering and all that pain, I decided to ask myself, okay, so how, you know, how do I, how can I make a difference? How can I, how can I do something about this? What can I do about this? So I started uh, studying uh, psychology and self-development and meditation quite early, like very early actually. Maybe you know, I was I became already interested in it when I was maybe ten years old, uh, and slowly, obviously, it developed, and I became interested in Eastern culture, martial arts, samurai. But I never really practiced something on an official level until uh, when I just turned fourteen. A friend of mine said that he's going back to Aikido after a short break. He said, do you want to go? And I didn't know back then what Aikido is, but he told me a bit and this and that. And I said, yeah, sure, let's, let's try. And pretty much after the first class, I felt like that's it. You know, that's, it has something that I'm looking for. It, it's, it's a tool that could help me uh, develop the qualities that I need. And only later, when I was practicing, I, I, learned, I discovered that the philosophy of Aikido, which I really fell in love with early on, I, I really enjoyed what Osensei was saying. And it really clicked to me, you know, what he was talking a lot about, uh, fulfilling your purpose, about protecting others, having the protective spirit, about transforming conflict. And it was exactly what I was looking for. So I really, uh, I really became passionate about Aikido. And although I was still going to school, uh, quite soon enough, uh, school became a secondary uh, thing and uh, Aikido became a primary thing. 
So I'd spend a lot of time in the dojo. I would train every day. I would go there to train extra. I would, do... and I even got a got into a fairly high position in uh, in my dojo with my instructor. Since the town, all the all the senior young people would leave to study. So there was it was it was one of those dojos which which is which which suffers from not having a black belt because. You know, everybody leaves before they get their black belt. Uh, so I, be, I, I got a high position, so I started helping out my instructor with kids' classes. Sometimes I even taught adults, although I was still very young. So I got some practice in teaching, which was great. And in the beginning, we had a great contact with my teacher. Uh, and I was very inspired by, by what he said his example. But as years passed, uh, our our perspective started started to collapse, uh, collide. Mm, you know, I was very much uh, enthusiastic about what Osensei was saying, and he was more enthusiastic about the martial arts aspect. Uh, he was more actually interested in jujitsu than Aikido, uh, karate as well. So he learned some karate training methods into Aikido training. Uh, so I started to and I started to realize that what I feel Aikido is more, what he feels Aikido is, is not necessarily the same thing. Uh, there were other things too, but long story. But anyway, so um, after about three years of constant practice, uh, I started to around what what else is possible. And back then, I was still going to school, and school was about to school was coming to an end, uh, and I had to to make a decision: what am I going to do after after school? And so I realized that uh, I don't want to study. You know, in Lithuania, especially back then, it was pretty much, it was unofficially mandatory to study. If you don't study, you're a loser, you know, it means something is wrong with you. And I was fairly smart, I wasn't, you know, a, a loser. Uh, so I had that pressure of, uh, of people telling me that I need to study, my parents, friends, uh, grandparents, etc. Uh, so the pressure was very strong, nobody asked me if I want to study, everybody asked me what do I want to study? Uh, I had a lot of conflicts. I was choosing between a lot of different things, what I could do, but none of them I felt passionate about. And so I made this pilgrimage from, uh, from, from, uh, some, from a certain point to a famous place in Lithuania next to Shule called the Hill of Crosses. This was a 50 kilometer, it's like, it's like four, 35 miles uh, walk. And uh, it was from six in the morning to 10 in the evening, pretty much without any breaks. So I, as I was walking, I was asking, okay, so what will I do after I finish high school? And suddenly it dawned on me that, you know, I was asking myself the wrong question. As I mentioned to you, I was not asking myself if I want to study. I asked myself, what do I want to study? But when I asked myself if I want to study, I realized, no, you know, simply no. That's, that's not my path. That's not, that's not why I'm here. And uh, then I asked myself, okay, so what do I want to do? And I, very quickly I realized I wanted to be an Aikido instructor. I thought about that already before. Uh, I really enjoyed teaching and I had some experience in teaching. And I realized that I wanted to devote my, my life to it. But, uh, but obviously when everybody was asking me what I, am I going to study, uh, I just lost that, that notion. And eventually when it came back to me, I realized, you know, that's it. So I decided I want to go to Japan uh, because you know Japan is the or origin of uh, kind of origin of Aikido. But uh, when I started looking at Uchideshi programs in Japan, uh, they would need they would normally needed recommendations, and uh, and I had no contact with those instructors who could recommend me. Um, we were belonging to a different organization, and then eventually I found uh, that there's an Uchideshi program in Switzerland, led by Cynthia Patrick Cassidy. And I wrote him a long, big email asking a lot of different questions, and he wrote back, just come. You know. So I was, back then I was still 18 when I reached out to him. You know, I had been traveling a bit, I, I spoke English already, but, but still my experience was fairly small. And uh, yeah, so I had, to, I, had to make that, I had to make that leap of faith and tell my parents, I'm not going to study. I'm going to go become an Jiteshi, and I'm going to become an instructor. So it was hard for them to digest that. Uh, obviously, they were in <laughs> that. They thought I'm making a mis big mistake. 
but uh, after two years of convincing, I convinced them. So eventually they were convinced to let me try and fail. So I would see it by myself. <laughs> that was the deal. So yeah, they let me out to become a Nishideshi. So after I finished high school, summer passed, and then uh, I turned 19, and I went to Switzerland to become a Nishideshi. I spent three months there. Uh, for that moment, it felt like a lot. And so many things changed. In school, I was quite depressed. I felt bad. And uh, uh, there was a lot of negative uh, feelings towards school, towards my country, towards a lot of things. And I felt lost and confused. And when I became a Chideshi, everything just cleared away. Uh, sense of patriarchy showed me a different type of Aiko. And I was really able to, to solve all of my all my hesitations, all my doubts, and to really commit to that path. Obviously, it was a long and difficult process by itself, but eventually, after a few months, I came back to Lithuania for a small heart surgery. It's another story. Uh, but, but that time back there, I knew that I will come back there to become an IQ instructor. So there's a lot more that I could tell and will tell, but uh, I don't want to push too much information into you uh, in one go. Uh, just a short notice, uh, I did promise a couple of people already to put out a video about proper ukemi, in terms of ukemi as receiving, being a good uke to a partner. Uh, so I will do that, uh, probably I'll do it after this video, I'll do that one, and then I will continue this story further. If you have any questions, uh, please don't hesitate to ask in the comments. I always read them, I always go through them. I don't always have the chance to answer, but, but I'm there, I'm present. Uh, if you have any requests on a topic, let me know too. Uh, I also want to remind you that the Judici program uh, is, has been started and anyone can come to our dojo. We have full living capabilities, just come. And I'm gonna teach a seminar in Germany in November, in Bavaria. With other free instructors. If you want to join that, let me know in the comments and I'll give you some more information. All in all, this was Rokas and it was great to hang out with you and I'll see you in another video.